After playing Dredge last year, I was hooked. Hooked on the relaxing nature of sitting at sea, fishing, making some money from my catch, whilst bathing in the creepy, ominous Lovecraftian atmosphere and learning the stories of the locals. For some reason, I didn't do a video on the first DLC, The Pale Reach. I recorded the footage and it completely slipped my mind, but anyway, the second DLC dropped last Thursday and I was eager to board my little boat and to go fish some more. This DLC was awesome and gave us some more depth into the story in terms of what's happening in this place, and it ties into the ending of the main game. I did do a video on the main story from Dredge, so you can find it down below in the description. Finally, before we get into it, please be aware that there will be spoilers in this video for the whole story of Dredge. If you want to learn the story for yourself, go and play this game. If not, then let's dive in. So let's briefly recap the story from the main game. A fisherman is sailing to the small coastal town of Greater Marrow, as he's got a job as the town's new angler. After crashing his boat after sailing through thick fog and being given another one by the town's mayor, which he quickly pays off, the fisherman meets an odd man called the Collector, who holds a strange book called the Book of the Deep, which grants various otherworldly and cosmic powers to the fisherman and his boat. Throughout his time in the archipelago, the fisherman notices phenomena, especially during dark nights at sea. He also sees various sea monsters and meets people, all with their own issues and backstories. These include the researcher at the old fortress and creepy hooded figures. He also notices that he's being followed by Leviathan. He finds messages too, which detail journal entries written by a newlywed woman named Julie, whose husband dredged up a casket from the seabed. The casket, when opened, unleashed a beast the Leviathan. Leviathan destroyed the boat, killing Julie and stranding the husband and the town's previous mayor on an island. A thick fog then descended upon the area. Collecting ruins for the Collector, the fisherman eventually realises after an argument with the Collector that the Collector is actually himself, his own reflection, and he is also Julie's husband. The Collector persona is representative of his inability to accept the demise of his wife. This is also evidenced by him having the book with him from the start of the game. We'll leave the main plot there for now as what happens next are the two endings, so let's look at the DLC. A drilling rig has been constructed within the archipelago and near to it, the fishermen can discover crates in the water. On one of the crates, it's made clear that the contents of the crate belong to the Ironhaven Corporation. Picking it up and docking at the rig, the fisherman speaks with the rig's foreman. He explains that the crate the fisherman found contains supplies to get their facilities up and running, and the lost crate is a result of the Ironhaven ships having gone missing at sea, although the foreman thinks that the ship's crewmen tried to steal the supplies and sell them. The foreman invites the fisherman up to the rig's main deck. It's just a platform at this time, and because Ironhaven won't be able to send down more crates, if the fishermen can find these crates, it will allow the workers on the rig to construct new facilities that the fishermen can be free to use. The fisherman also meets various other workers, such as the founder, who offers the fishermen some dodgy dealings for supplies and equipment, as well as the engineer who works in the factory and the tech lab. Using more supply crates, the fisherman helps the workers construct the foundry, the tech lab, and the factory. After getting the rig's generator going, the foreman starts the drill deployment. It drills through the seabed, but a huge fissure opens up, leading straight to the marrows, and an odd, dark, oozing liquid sits on the surface of the water. The workers stop drilling as a result. The fisherman then speaks with the head scientist. He's there in the rig's lab in order to conduct research. He shows a particular interest in the types of fish that the fisherman has caught previously. When explaining, the scientist becomes more and more intrigued. Anyway, the scientist is excited about the appearance of the fissure on the seabed, and it seems he expected this to happen, so the scientist, who has worked for the Ironhaven Corporation for his entire career, asks the fisherman to help him with their sample analysis by catching some fish from the affected area. The fisherman then sets off for the marrows and into the substance to catch fish. The fish are different to the ones the fisherman has previously caught. Bubbles also burst from the liquid, and the dark substance enters the boat's cargo hold. Catching the required specimens, the fisherman returns to the scientist. He inspects the specimens and can barely contain his excitement. He explains that the fish the fisherman has caught haven't been seen outside of the fossil record for a long time, meaning that these fish came up out of the fissure created by the disturbance from the drilling. At that moment, the foreman shouts that they are withdrawing the drill from the seabed. Another fissure opens up, this one leading towards the Gale Cliffs, along with more of the dark substance coming up. The fisherman collects some of the dark liquid for the scientist using a siphon trawler and it appears the substance is… alive? He plays it off but the scientist is clearly very intrigued by it. 
The scientist also needs more specimens, so sends the fisherman off to Gale Cliffs to catch more. Again, after catching the fish the scientist needs, the fisherman returns to the scientist. This time, he draws fluid from each creature. The dark substance is seemingly crawling up into the syringe. And then, something happens. As seen, another fissure opens up, leading to the Stella Basin. The scientist mentions a former student of his who was developing a new technology, a way of communicating. At some point, because she was changing the words coming from the technology, as she didn't agree with what Ironhaven were doing, the head scientist had her stationed to a place where nothing was happening, but this was more for her safety than anything else. Yeah, Ironhaven are that kind of company. He explains that she is currently stationed at the old fortress in Stella Basin. This is the researcher the fisherman had already met. Speaking with her, the researcher said that the word she connected to the defense system was the word flee, and this caused the creatures to literally disappear. She says that although she strongly disagrees with what Ironhaven and their executives are doing, she can't allow their workers to be in danger, so she gives up the blueprints for the defense system to the fishermen. The rig workers install it back at the rig, and the tentacles wrapped around the legs of the rig sink back down into the depths. Delivering the stellar basin samples to the scientist, he connects electrodes to the heads of the specimens. He says the mind of the creatures can be extracted. The electricity then makes the creatures jolt. Later, the Ironhaven Company executive has arrived. Now, he's not too happy about the fisherman being there on the rig and has finished giving the foreman a piece of his mind in terms of the fisherman having done more work than him on getting things going. The fisherman tries to warn the executive about the seabed, the fault, the fishers, and the creature that wrapped itself around the rig, but since the creature is now gone, the executive doesn't believe it and tells him to continue drilling. As expected, more disturbances to the deep causes another fissure to open up, all the way to the twisted strand. The executive tells the fisherman there's one more building that needs to be constructed. Fleet services, which will allow the corporation to have its own boats. Helping them construct it, the fisherman is granted a much needed upgrade for his boat. Meanwhile, the scientist seems different. When talking of his boss, the executive, he calls him his master. He seems obsessed with the dark substance, saying it holds secrets and whispers. Anyway, heading to Twisted Strand, the fisherman catches more specimens for the scientist. Heading back and handing them over, the scientist places the creatures into a metal chamber and says that he needs to know where they came from. A dark fluid rises in a tube coming from the chamber. He says it's not pure and that they'll need more and to go deeper. The executive is on the platform and orders the foreman to drill. A huge creature circles the rig and again another fissure opens up, this time in Devil's Spine and at the location of the old ruins. The foreman is flabbergasted that the executive wants them to continue drilling, even with the presence of the giant creature swimming about and multiple fissures having opened up. The executive disappears into his office, and the foreman tries to get the fisherman to help them. The foreman has had enough. He wants the fisherman to sabotage the defense system, and for the creature to damage the rig, forcing them to stop drilling. Speaking with the researcher, the fisherman learns of another word, rise and this will act as an invitation. The fisherman goes back to the rig and sabotages the defense system, and like clockwork, the creature rises from the depths again and squeezes the legs of the rig, doing damage. The leviathan rises and attacks one of the tentacles, causing the tentacles to withdraw back down into the depths again. As expected, the executive leaves in the chopper the moment that danger is present, leaving the workers to fend for themselves. Everyone is safe though. With one more thing to do, the fisherman heads to Devil's Spine to get more specimens. Returning to the lab with the specimens, the fisherman is shocked at what he finds. By now, the scientist is cowering behind his board, speaking of the inevitable conclusion and that their work is almost complete. What is going on with the scientist? Putting the specimens on the table, the scientist rushes towards them and he changes. After biting into one of the creatures, the scientist dives out of the lab window and down into the depths. Now, we should probably look at what happened to him. Okay, so it's no surprise that the Ironhaven Corporation knew exactly what they were doing, and what was happening in this area. They weren't there to drill for oil, not a chance. A very secretive and private company, their history is mysterious and goes back centuries. They were sometimes accused of being a secret cult. In the main game, the fisherman comes across an abandoned research station in the Stella Basin. This research post featured a repulsion machine, similar to the defense system, and it kept the entity living in the Stella Basin at bay. 
The outpost was the location where the researcher was previously working, but she relocated to the fort after the outpost was attacked. Ironhaven were there in the area doing research because they'd surmised it to be a place of cosmic power. The scientist, meanwhile, tells the fisherman pretty early on that he'd been at the company a long time. For his entire career, in fact. Turns out that the scientist also called the shots when it came to where the company were to drill. The foreman even says that the executives were not expecting massive output from drilling in that particular archipelago, but it's clear that the scientist is trying to achieve something. He wanted to see something through. Were his intentions for the good of humankind, or for some quest to awaken a sleeping beast and to bring about the end? It could be that both he and the Ironhaven executives were fanatics, wanting to be blessed with the power of the deep. He speaks of the Elder, and says that the Elder communicates in power. The scientist, after the tentacles grip the rig, says, it's really here. His assumptions were correct. In the conversation with the researcher, she says that the Ironhaven Corporation were trying to communicate with other species. She also says that she long suspected that the scientist was up to something strange, as she'd hear him whispering in his office and in the lab. He'd been planning for a long time. So this dark substance has made an appearance all throughout the game. Near to the start of the game, the mayor in Greater Marrow asks the fisherman to deliver a package to Little Marrow and to a dock worker. The package was noted to be dripping with some substance, a substance with which the dock worker was being very secretive. Later, visiting the dock worker shows that he's changed. He's looking at the water from the dock and looks terrified. His breathing becomes laboured and some dark substance drips from his ear. It's possible that the dock worker was feasting on aberrated fish himself. And this substance is also the cause for the aberrated fish in the archipelago. The efforts of the nefarious Ironhaven Corporation simply made it much worse with the fishes opening up in the seabed. If, after the scientist turns into an aberrated being and jumps out of the window and into the sea, the fisherman can craft some aberrated bait, throw it in the water and actually catch the aberrated remains of what used to be the scientist. Known as 230, this fishman is described here as a deep form. It mentions the Elder Blood, which is the dark substance, and this Elder Blood appeared after going deeper with the drill, led to the purest form of blood from the depths coming up to the surface and releasing fish long thought extinct. Maybe transforming into these fishmen is what the fanatics were aiming for. In the main game's campaign, we do meet a fanatic. In my original video, I talked about this fanatic. One of the residents at Ingfell spoke about an old whaler from Ingfell that went missing. He went mad after finding an old scroll and after eating mutated fish in the pursuit of immortality. His name was Magran and they called him Magran the Fishman and the fanatic had scales on his arm. The fish were obviously the catalyst for the madness, but this wasn't quite enough. The blood from the fish before the fishers opened was not pure enough. The dark substance being on the boat was enough for the fishermen to start going mad and hallucinating. I believe that the fisherman didn't turn, as remember, he's had the Book of the Deep with him the whole time, potentially protecting him. However, using the purest form of the Elder Blood from the depths, the scientist gradually mutated and transformed into the 230 aberration. I'm not sure whether or not this was his goal, as he could have just wanted immortality like Magran. It's not clear as to whether or not the scientist had actually become a deep one, but old Magran certainly had the Innsmouth look, with his scaly skin and bulging eyes. Let me know what you think down below. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the DLC's story. The player is then free to experience the ending for the main game. In the one ending, considered the bad ending, the fisherman gives the collector a final relic, possessions that belong to Julia. He goes out on the boat and performs a ritual to resurrect the fisherman's dead wife. This comes at a cost, as a giant eldritch horror, thought by many to be Cthulhu, rises from the deep and destroys the entire world. For the other ending, the good ending, the fisherman speaks with the old mayor. Then he speaks with a lighthouse keeper who knew the fisherman from before. The fisherman then goes out to the spot where his wife died and he throws the Book of the Deep into the sea. Leviathan then emerges from the depths and devours the boat and the book along with the fisherman and the fog then clears. In the original video, I mentioned that Leviathan seems to be guarding the area, making sure nothing bad happens. This is seen when the fisherman tries to leave with the book as the Leviathan seems to want to prevent the fisherman from leaving. During the game, the fisherman can also discover a small boat with a terrified courier inside. He says he's meant to deliver a package to the dock worker, but couldn't as he's being hunted by the Leviathan. Another case for the Leviathan not necessarily being good, but trying to prevent a disaster. 
And that's pretty much it for the Iron Rig DLC. As mentioned, if you want a more comprehensive explanation of the game's main storyline, then go and check out my original Dredge video. Overall, Dredge was an awesome indie horror game. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and subscribe if you aren't already. Leave a comment below with your thoughts, but for now, take care and I will see you in the next one.